I think journalists who cover war zones in some ways have a very similar set of experiences to those who are fighting in those war zones. We're not carrying a weapon. It's, I'm not likening them to be exactly one and the same. But the similarity is we are seeing often the exact same things. We're hearing the same explosions. We're smelling the same things that are in the air. And in some ways, when you're embedded as a journalist, you're actually further forward than some of those who serve. There are soldiers who are far away from home, who are far away from their families, but they're at very large bases where they're not seeing combat. If you're embedded, you're seeing combat all the time. And when I left, I thought of myself as a tough guy. I thought most journalists don't want to do this, can't do this, I'm wearing body armor, here I am running around. When I came back, I had nightmares. I would have flashes of rage and temper. I'd hear a sound and I would jump to the ground. I couldn't sit in a restaurant unless my back was to the far wall and I could see where the exit was. My fear was, what if the window explodes and glass hits me? And at first, some of my friends thought it was kind of funny, like, oh, there he goes again, there's the sound, and he's jumping at it. It took me a long time, years, to accept that I had PTSD. It took therapy, it took ultimately medication, which I'm not ashamed to admit because that saved my own life. But it took a long, long time to admit that this wasn't something I could just will away. This wasn't something that if I could just find the toughness to do it, I could make this problem stop. I could sleep better. I could not have a wake up, no matter how light the sound. But it took a long time, a long time, to really accept that was the case, and a longer time to seek help.